Hello, my loves, and welcome back to another episode of Womb Wealth and Wellness. I am your host, Lauren, and I am so excited for today's episode because I sat down with my BFF and my CEO, Olivia Celine, and we talked to all the things banner pump rules. <laughs> it was really like, I mean, the most fun thing about this is it was really like you were, my intention is that you feel as though you're sitting there with us, like sipping coffee, sipping the tea while we spill the tea on all things Vanderpump Rules. If you know me, you know that I have been so obsessed with this season. I mean, I love Vanderpump Rules in general. It's by far one of my favorite reality TV series and this season has just been so jam-packed with the drama, with so much to unpack. So we go over the final two episodes of the season. And what's so special about this is Olivia was actually the one to introduce me to Vanderpump Rules back in 2020 when the world felt like it was shut down and there wasn't much to do. That's when I began to dip my toe into Vanderpump Rules. And after the first season, I dove in head first and have not come back up for air. <laughs> so without further ado, you can listen to the episode, grab a cup of coffee, make some cacao, get some tea, like whatever is going to set the vibe, set the stage, just lean back, relax, listen to us. There's moments where Olivia's son comes into the room. So you really get a taste of the fact that we are working women, best friends, mothers, and this is just like the real life, so much of what actually happens um, in our day to day and our everything every day. So I love you so much. I hope you enjoy. Thank you for listening. If you are a fan of Vanderpump Rules and you have been watching this season and you're so excited about the finale and you have thought, send me a DM because I love talking about it. Like send me anything, womb health, wellness, business, and also Vanderpump Rules, please. Okay. I love you so much. And here's Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Womb Wealth and Wellness Podcast. I am Lauren, your host. So today's episode is a little <laughs> bit different. It's so exciting. I have my best friend, my ride or die, COO, the right-hand woman of my company, Olivia Celine, with me. And we're going to be going over the two final episodes of Vanderpump Rules and diving into them, talking about polarity and some of these things that we're witnessing, sisterhood wounding, this inability to express remorse, discon being disconnected from your body, trauma. I mean, just all of it. We're also going to talk about like the gossip, the juice. The <laughs> because I'm because like, I didn't prepare anything that's like super philosophical. I, know, I have I'm all I have in it. It's beautiful. So welcome, Olivia. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> this is this is so funny. I'm like, are you sure you want to do this? Because I don't know if my like Virgo brain is going to come out of like my very like I'm managing and running a company. Instead, it's like full on human girl talk gossip. What's the tea? Today. I know, but this is like a behind the scenes. So what's really funny is Olivia and I obviously we've been friends for the past few years and Olivia is actually the one that back in 2020, I was like, I need a good show to watch. And she's oh, like, yeah. you get into Vanderpump Rules. And yeah. I binge watch at that time. There was only seven seasons, maybe. You and watched I, it so fast. So fast. Like that's all I did for, for weeks. I was so hooked. And I found yeah. relatability to it because I come from a restaurant background. So although it's not like a restaurant in Hollywood being filmed and the drama was never that much, but I definitely knew that being in a restaurant, just naturally, there's a lot of yeah. sex, a lot of drama, a lot of scandal. I met Justin, my husband in the restaurant. And oh, even when we first started dating, there was like so much drama. <laughs> it's just like, so I got hooked and that's why I wanted to have you on. Cause <clears throat> I mean, this is this is what we talk about. So we have our Voxer chat, which is for business. <laughs> and then we have our WhatsApp chat, which, which is always like moms behind the scenes, 
Just oh my god, I'm losing it. I'm <laughs> unraveling. <laughs> Talk me off a ledge. <laughs> and also Vanderpump Rules. <laughs> and also Vanderpump Rules. Yeah. So, which I think like make note of because I think what we're doing is pretty unique in the sense of I know we had a lot of resistance even before we started working together of like is this going to ruin our friendship? Are we allowed to do this? Like, cause you don't see this happen a lot of us working together in this capacity. Cause we're not necessarily collaborating on anything. We're not sure there's a co-creative component, but it's your company. And essentially I work for you. And yeah. I think we've done a really good job of keeping friendship here and business here, but then the aspects that make sense for business within our friendship and like the way that we get along and the way that we know each other and the way that we can be real with each other, like we're able to really make it work, which I think, I mean, it's been since what, November, October? No, September. September. Yeah. Cause you, uh, you actually helped me end out the first sacred authority launch and I just kind of like hired Mm -hmm. you on to help me finish it out. Mm -hmm. And Yeah. I mean, I had, I mean, you remember like I had so much hesitancy Mm -hmm. and I was interviewing other women for the role role and they were great, but I was just like, I really desire someone that knows this work Mm -hmm. and also knows my heart within the work. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I think, I mean, it's worked out so beautifully Mm -hmm. and obviously with any relationship, there's like, we have really open communication with one another we have really, I think like really good boundaries, mm-hmm. you know, within, okay, what's business and then what's personal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a beautiful testament of mm-hmm. like sisterhood and just, yeah. yeah. So well, I, and, I mean, you guys could go back and listen to episodes where we've talked about like our friendship even too, because we've been through the, the ringer and the sense of we've been had, we've been able to kind of face some really challenging situations together over the years and then come out the other side with growth and evolution and, and transformation within the the friendship too, which is pretty, again, pretty unique. So we've been able to heal, I think a lot of sisterhood wounding and friendship, and then also within a business relationship and working relationship. And yeah, I think the synergy is great. So I'm really grateful. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, I love you so much. I okay. love you too. So, oh my gosh, I'm like, where do we begin? <laughs> So I kind of want to start with this most recent episode, and then we can go back and pull in some of the other pieces. So for those of you that, I mean, I'm going to be honest, I feel like even if you're not a fan of Vanderpump Rules and you haven't watched it thus far, which you should, you should. And also like (laughs) this season alone, I mean, they've won awards. I think they just won like three three awards. It was so good. It was so well edited. I'm a big fan of reality TV. And what I love so much about Vanderpump Rules is it's not scripted. Yeah. It is the real, you know, this isn't no Laguna beach when they (laughs) lift up. Do you remember that like epic ending? Yes, when they that was heartbreaking. Oh, it was so scripted, but it was so juicy. I know it's on, it's on Netflix. P.S. If you ever want to go back and watch Laguna Beach. It's I still almost good. can't. I feel like it just brings back so many memories that I don't know if I'm ready for. I'm just going to keep those hidden in the dark closets of my, of myself to, to deal with in, in trauma therapy one day. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's so funny um so this last episode was like the second finale um and the reason why they had to pick up filming um back in march because essentially the news broke that ariana found a video on tom's phone of R- raquel or rachel raquel has changed changed her name to raquel her real name's rachel so she found uh a video of them FaceTiming of sexual, of a sexual nature. And, um, that's when the news broke that they were having this affair and quickly it came out that it wasn't like a one-time thing. It was seven months. Mm. And so you see this all happen. I think it was so ironic that Sheena and Rachel, and I'm just going to call her Rachel just in respect to Ariana, because I love that they all call her Rachel now. Um, but I, I think it's so interesting that Rachel and Sheena were at what Watch What Happens Live, and then the news broke out. And so so essentially, like, the first, like, major scene is Tom and Ariana's conversation with one another. And my heart broke. Like, I... And here's the relatability piece. I know what it feels like to grieve a nine-year relationship. Mm-hmm. 
And grieving a nine-year relationship is literally losing a piece of yourself Mm -hmm. because you feel, and I remember this so vividly, like there are so many moments when Justin and I, you know, broke up and took that year apart. And like, we didn't, we didn't think that we were coming back together, but I just, Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you're sleeping next to someone and you're picturing your life with someone. And that's what you're grieving is you're grieving the life you thought you would have. So I was crying, like I'm sitting next to Justin in bed and I'm crying because I could just feel that pain. Mm. And you could also feel like the anger from Ariana, like you, you were having an affair with like literally like someone that I, like Ariana took Rachel in under her wing. She always defended her ever since like they, you know, she was dating James, you know, she always stuck up for this girl And you also have like, you're grieving this nine year relationship Mm -hmm. and this person that you think that you're going to go through life with. Right. So I felt a lot for her. Yeah. How did you feel watching that? I mean, I, so I've been with Joe for since 2007. Um, but we like fully got back together, like 2011, 2012 because we took time apart, like, but it was so early on. I mean, we were not married, like essentially Ariana and Tom were married. They were life yeah. partners. They had a beautiful home together. They built businesses together. They had, you know, this whole life and they, like she had, oh my God, when she said, I would have followed you anywhere, it yeah. broke me into pieces. Cause like the way she choked that out, I was like, oh my God. So I had full body chills the whole time. Cause I remembered vividly those breakups that feel, I mean, when Joe and I broke up the first time way back when again, young love, whatever, a little different in that aspect. I recognize that, but it was like the devastation and the full body, like not eating for days and like laying in your bed, like dry heaving because you're crying so hard and like your entire body, it just feels broken. Your entire world feels like it's over. And like watching her and the anger is obviously the coping mechanism, not only for like, yes, she felt angry and underneath that is the deep, deep, deep grief and all of that that she's kind of trying to process as well. And the anger felt very much like this armor of like, I'm going to stay strong and I'm just going to be pissed at you because then I don't have to feel the pain and the hurt of it. Um, And so kind of reacting and being in that kind of throwing it at him versus really being able to sit in the heart of the grief, um, which we saw, she obviously goes into, and I'm, I'm glad she has like the both and of that. So I do think that that's important, but it was so hard to watch and it was heartbreaking. And, you know, it was interesting because I, it was the hard part was watching Tom gaslight her and like, put it all back on her, that it was all her fault for some reason. And I'm really, I'm glad she was able to see through that and was like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, are you She's emotionally intelligent? Like Ariana yeah. is probably one of yeah. the most, like, I think that's why people love Ariana because she is the most emotionally intelligent person mm-hmm. on the show, like by, by far, like she calls yeah. people out on their bullshit mm-hmm. and she, mm-hmm keep going. Cause there's a, there's something in that, that like, I want to share about with no, sure. just, you know, Tom, like what she said about why Tom chose Rachel mm-hmm. over, over her and essentially mm-hmm. have this affair was because she, Rachel gassed him up mm-hmm. and Ariana didn't mm-hmm. do that. So there's like a catch 22 to this because Ariana is like very much grounded and you know she's firm she calls Tom out on his shit which I think is needed in relationships I think a lot of times it was like this this armor so she wasn't able to soften so if we're talking about polarity it created an armor of disconnection within the relationship which you know can cause essentially men to cheat because they they're they're not getting their needs met in a lot of ways Mm -hmm. and also and I want to be like really mindful with the way that I'm saying this because I'm not saying that what Tom did was okay not at all and I'm not putting the blame on Ariana Mm -hmm. what I'm saying is is she she literally said it she's like you you wanted someone to gash you up you wanted someone to have an unconditional you know, love for you. And she's like, and you know, you got a little taste of money. You got a little taste of fame and you essentially ruined this relationship because you wanted your ego fucking stroked. Mm -hmm. Like that's what happened is he wanted his ego stroked. And I don't think Ariana was doing that in the way that 
I don't want to call him a narcissist because I'm not going to diagnose people, uh-huh. but there's a lot of narcissistic traits that have surfaced in this whole situation. Yeah. Yeah. God, I have a really hard time. And even like talking about it publicly makes me feel like really vulnerable because I, I struggle in the sense of, you know, like Ariana didn't, I think there's, there's two sides here, right? Yeah. Ariana didn't worship him as the king of the relationship. He didn't worship her as the queen. He was very, and again, all of this is just our assumption, by the way, we're not their doctors. We're not their therapists. We're not their best friends. We are few viewers and fans of the show. Um, looking at this through our own lens of informed kind of experience and, and knowledge that we've gained over the years in our work. But what I think is interesting is that there is like, you know, the king and queen in a relationship, there's a mutual worship that has to happen, a mutual reverence for one another. And neither of them really gave that to each other. You know, she did choke through those words of like, I would have followed you anywhere, which is so beautiful. But did she ever share that throughout the years that I saw on television? No. Did she ever like, soften, like you said, and really let her guard down and allowed herself to just be in devotion to her man? No. Um, But also he didn't do that to her. He was threatened by her beauty. He was threatened by her popularity. He was threatened by her emotional intelligence. He was threatened by her success and her, her drive and her ambition. And so there was like this really like out of sorts, kind of out of balance, I think, aspect to the polarity in the relationship where he did Raquel, I mean, in a gross fangirly way, which is very, very, very like immature feminine to me, but did, you know, kiss the ground that he walked on, thought he was so hot and so fancy and so bougie. And like, she fed that part of his ego, not in the mature, like mother archetype, you know, divine feminine of I'm worshiping the ground that my king walks on and and I am in devotion to him. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that there's like kind of multiple layers to that, but I'm curious where, so does this mean that timeline wise Raquel and Tom, when they went on that camping trip, were they fucking at the time? Yeah. Okay. So they, so they, it was like September, right? So they started hooking up after Ariana's dog died after they went to that Vegas So So that was was like really early on in the season. I mean, you didn't even have, like, they apparently were having sex at Sheena's wedding and were hooking up there. Cause that was even more messed up. When I reflected on the camping trip, it broke me more of like, I cannot believe that this girl, which we're going to talk about was like looking Ariana in the eye as besties. And yet she's like looking across at Tom of like, you know, word doing it. I just, am like, oh my gosh. So anyway, but to kind of go back to, I was just curious. I wanted to not forget that aspect, but to go back to the polarity piece, I think that that's what's tricky for me was that watching this this conversation and this argument. And again, it's not to say anything is Ariana's fault, but we do, I think, as women, which can be really triggering, have to look at our own responsibility. And I have to do that in my relationship constantly, and I'm con- extremely triggered by it. Like sometimes it really pisses me off that I have to look at myself and be like, oh, you know, how am I showing up to the relationship? Because you also have to think about like Ariana's body image issues, which then obviously played part in the lack of intimacy and the lack of sex and, and chemistry that they had that way over the years. And if she's healing that, or if she had healed that, like you wonder how that would have allowed her to let her guard down and to soften and then been able to meet him there. And then both of their needs could have been met, but they weren't, they were like really good friends. And, and I share this in the episode that I did on polarity, speaking about this, of a woman who is healing and we both have, you know, work through body. And I think we constantly are as mothers. Oh, I'm still, I'm body. so far in it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so it's not something that's like fully healed, but mm-hmm. when I know of working with women so deeply, a lot of times on body image and connecting to their body you know, when we're in partnership, we really do require a man that can see us yeah. and that can create yeah. that safety for us and can validate us and, you know, can hold us through that healing. And I don't think Tom established that level of safety with Ariana. No. no. And um, nothing you know, about him is safe. Nothing. No. And so I, I don't think Ariana ever really received that like safe space to like completely unleash and unravel. And 
you know, she, in the episode prior, when they were having the conversation about, you know, her needs being met, like she, she clearly stated, and she stated this with Raquel as well. Like she clearly Mm -hmm. stated, I need my man to spend time with me to have. So her love language from what we've gathered is quality time and quality time is like the most simple times together. I mean, it is like, Mm -hmm. you know, Justin and I went to the pool yesterday and Elliot was like playing with all the friends that she met. And we just like sat there talking and like that opened my heart so much to receive him. And like, we were just like so deeply and it had nothing to do with sex. It had nothing to do with, you know, but it like opened me up to just like fully like receive him. And Mm. I mean, Tom gaslit her. She was literally sitting there being like, this This is, and this was the episode, the previous, like the previous episode, she was so clear in stating what she needed, which I loved. Yeah. Yeah. So clear. And he gaslit her. He said some shit about them taking mushrooms and like tripping until two o'clock in the morning. (laughs) Go, And I'm just like, that's like, you're a grown man. Like that's, yeah, that might've been something you do in your twenties and like you're partying, but like for sure having it every night. Yeah. It's like, you're out every night till 2 AM. You're not going to come home and stick your dick in her. And like, she's not going to be satisfied. Well, that's what she said. She said, I can't have sex with a stranger. And I, and this is my question though. And I don't think I have an answer. This is my question. And maybe you can speak to this then my, cause I'm the same way with Joe and I same mm-hmm. exact thing. He needs physical touch to be able to open up and soften and to be able yeah. to like go into that. Like, and when we have sex, like the intimacy is next, like next level, the way we're able to see each other and the way that we're both able to communicate to each other. It's incredible. Mine is the quality time and the words of affirmation. So in order for me to feel safe and to be able to let my guard down and to be able to feel like my cup is filled, to be able to go into the physical intimacy, but it's like, what comes first, the chicken or the egg who goes first? Cause one of us, I think it's established. I think it's established together outside of the bedroom first. Yeah. So like, that's like, okay, because mine is physical touch Mm -hmm. and, um, and words of affirmation and Justin's is quality time Mm. and and acts of service. Mm. And so like throughout the week in the midst of parenting, it's Mm. and like doing life. It's like, it's the little micro moments that you build that Mm, up for when the intimacy happens, Mm -hmm. you know? So I think they both get to kind of live and it's, you know, the, like for Joe, it's like, the hair had exactly while watching hi- hockey or, yep. you know, yep. for like, for me, it's like the quick little like butt tap, like while totally. I'm making dinner, totally. like, you know, it's like the, or like, mm-hmm. oh, you look so pretty today or, you know, whatever it's like, or you're doing such a good job being a mom. Like, I need to hear those things, you know, 100%, yeah, right under, I have like three, like, I just love receiving so <laughs> So I think like right under that, my last one is gifts, but right under that is quality time. So Mm -hmm. I think like with Justin and I, since both of that is still like pretty high priority, it's like quality time is so important for us. And like, I'll Mm -hmm. say that I'm like, I, and you know, we both work from home or together a lot, but it's like the presence within the quality time. And I think that that's that's what what was lacking. That's what Ariana Mm -hmm. was desiring. And Mm -hmm. she did, she spoke it so clearly. And Mm -hmm. I have it right here is you know, men have to go into those conversations with an open heart. Otherwise their ego gets in the way mm-hmm. and Tom's ego got in the way. And I mean, the, the dude, the guy had, I don't want to say dude. Cause I hate that. He calls like Lisa, Lisa dude. Girl, dude, like oh it's gosh, so nasty. Bird just hit my window. What is that symbolism? What just hit your window? A bird just hit my window. Is it a blue jay? I don't know. Olivia, if it's a blue jay, then we need to be done. <laughs> Okay, for the past few weeks, listen. So for the past few weeks, you, you speak to it. I'm gonna look. Hold on. Okay, for the past few weeks, as like I've been launching the bridge leader, and like my voice has been activating every time I send Olivia a voice memo on it. Like it's happened like a handful of times, and she she's like, "Oh, there's a blue jay. The blue jay is back. Is it a blue jay?" Um, well, he's gone. So at least he didn't die because it it okay. hit so hard that I for sure thought something was dead outside my window, oh, which felt awesome. like an omen. Yeah, no, he lived. Oh, okay. Okay. Keep going. Throat chakra. Uh, you were gonna say anything else on that? Join the bridge leader. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. But uh, I was gonna say, so with that though, because that yeah. quality time aspect, it is like the presence. And I love that you spoke to the micro moments because I think that's the biggest thing that even gets in my own way of like, well, I have two kids that are, you know, two under two, like what the hell you want me to do about that? But it is in those. And Joe's even spoke to that. Like it's the littlest 
aspects of physical touch, grab my hand or like come rub my back for a second. Or, you know, like, let's just have a moment where we actually look each other in the eye and kiss and mean it. Like the littlest things can, can kind of lead into that. But I think what was hard too, is that when I look at Tom and Ariana, Tom is having a midlife crisis for sure. And his early forties, he's reaching not a spiritual awakening. His no, mm -mm. and he is going and kind of reverting into boy tendencies, fuck boy tendencies, and he's going back into like I'm going to be famous, I'm going to be a singer, and you know his the the way he's showing up is just so immature. And then she's very much like I want to be home with my man and have my successful company, but like cook dinner together. She even said that cook dinner together and like slow down and really relish in what they've created as being early forties and like, look at what we've done together instead of like, let's go back and be 20 again. Like you said, and trip on mushrooms till 2 AM and like that's quality time. So I think that there was a major disconnect in truly if Tom's honest with himself, what they both wanted. Yeah, He wanted someone to go out and party with him, which Raquel, who's a little young miss thing, of course, she's going to go out and party with him. Yeah. I mean, that's her season of life. And Mm -hmm. I do, I think, I think with both of the Toms, I think they uh, like it's um, it's Peter Pan syndrome. They are mm-hmm. grown adult men acting like little boys. I mean, Tom Schwartz apartment is the most disgusting thing in the world. If I was single and I was brought home to that like that, I'd, like I would just leave because I would like it's disgusting. Like you're a grown man and you're yeah. you literally are acting. They're both acting like 20 year old boys. Makes me sad because I like Tom Schwartz, but he is very immature. He's very like young and he like is refusing to grow up and take responsibility for his life, which is hard to watch. Yeah, but I feel I'm happy that, okay, so Katie has never been and hasn't always been an angel, but I think Katie this season, I think she got a lot of redemption this season. And I think that everyone got to see like exactly why she filed for divorce, why she Mm -hmm. had to leave because- Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw, like, we saw Tom Schwartz gash like Katie over and over and over Mm -hmm. again. And I, I'll take this stance and I will die on the hill that the reason why they get to got divorced was because of Tom and Tom's friendship Mm -hmm. as a married Mm -hmm. couple, Mm -hmm. you cannot choose your friend over your Mm -mm. partner. Nope. Your partner is your ride or die. Your partner is your person. Preach. Mm-hmm. You can have friends, but your friends have to be friends with of the marriage. You cannot have people in your back ear shitting mm-hmm. on your on your husband or your wife. Lauren is taking us to fucking church right now, like and she is that, on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that mm-hmm. is so mm-hmm. disgusting. And you, as a man, should mm-hmm. always, even if your wife is wrong in public, Mm -hmm. on reality TV, where there are millions of people tuning in, you have your wife's back. And when the cameras are off and the doors are closed, you can say your piece and you can speak your truth, but you always take your wife's back. Mm -hmm. That like the way that Tom treated Katie never stood up for her, Mm -hmm. never stood up for her, never. And even this season, I mean, that last scene with Raquel and Katie and Tom in the back alley of Sir, which was like so good. Like, honestly, there were so many like these past two episodes were just so well put together mm-hmm. from like a production standpoint. Mm-hmm. But like, Tom, just say, Raquel, get the get a go. Like, this is a conversation between me and my wife. They weren't even divorced yet. This is my conversation, a conversation between me and my wife. <laughs> yep. You need to leave. Yep. You can have it. You, you can. And uh, that whole scene had me livid, Olivia. Well, how about the whole scene when like Raquel and then Katie's mom and everything and Tom's just like cowardly in the background. Cowards. Like that was your mother-in-law for a decade go stand up for her. And I think that that's the hard thing is, and that's where I'm talking about Tom being so immature, Tom Schwartz in the sense, and I want him to win. I want to root for Tom Schwartz to win so hard because I love him, but he's so immature and he's so cowardly. And he's like a little boy that can't figure out. And he just wants everybody to be besties and he wants everybody to be happy and he wants to be happy and he wants to be friends with everyone. Similar to how he took like Randall's side sort of with Lala and like that whole situation after watching a lot, like Randall's a disgusting, disgusting, disgusting human being. And then he still wanted to be friends with him and play pickleball because he can just compartmentalize that. And 
it, it's so interesting because I watch like Katie and Lala, especially, and you, they're considered almost like the villains. And again, neither of them are perfect as none of us are, you know, yeah. I'm not sitting here on my high horse being righteous of like, here's what I see. And like, my life is perfect. I'm like, oh, wow. A lot of this is really reflective, beautiful. Um, but what I'm saying is what's, what I see in Katie and Lala is that meme that's going around right now of like, I'm in my villain era, but really your villain era is just you not being a people pleaser and having healthy boundaries. And that's what I see is that Lala and Katie are the quote unquote villains, but it's just because they're direct in their communication. They stand up for themselves and don't take any, I have full body chills. Don't take anybody's shit. And they are powerful embodied women of like, and very mature sometimes, most of the time. Um, but they come from this space of like, you will not talk to me like that. And you will not talk to my friend like that. And you will be put back in your place and you will take a step back. And yeah. that that is then is like, oh, they're the mean girls. They're not mean. They just know that this isn't okay. And they're not going to stand for it. And I actually applaud them very much for that. We need this more is- of that. Yeah, this is the whole notion that when women stop being the good girls and yep. the people pleasers and the women that, you know, were just like, you know, what, what's the saying? Like the wet towel just to walk out. I don't know. Like you're just like wet blanket. Is that the saying? It's it's something like, that. like a it's wet something. towel. Like where wet towel, wet blanket. I, I trust I you. Know. I'm yeah. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's like you're automatically considered a bitch yeah. because you have boundaries, because you have standards, yep. because you speak up for yourself, yep. because you speak up for your friends, because you just you just you're not gonna allow it. And I think with Katie and Lala, you know, they've been so hurt by these men that they love, that they yeah. devoted themselves to that. Mm-hmm you know, in a lot of ways they were loyal to. And, and we're also not condoning like season one, two, three, Katie. Like I'm not saying she was no, a perfect tequila, wife. Katie's mm-hmm. a different Katie. Like tequila mm-hmm. Katie is something else. I think, I think Stassi not being in Vanderpump Rules has been really good for Katie because Katie always kind of like fell behind Stassi. Mm-hmm. And I okay. think that it's been I, I just like, I can appreciate, I was talking to one of my girlfriends who's like really big into Vanderpump rules and we've been texting. It's just like with James, it's like, I can appreciate anyone that is willing to take responsibility for themselves and does the work that they need to do to heal. <laughs> James definitely still needs to go to therapy, but. But he also is consistently himself, which I appreciate. He's authentic and he's real. He's also so funny. Like James is literally <laughs> probably my favorite character. On when he show. called Raquel on the phone, I was, I was dying. dying. Joe oh even, God. Joe perked up because he was next to me doing something else. And he perks up and he's like, he's consistent. Like he is. Cock, that cockety, that 40 year old cockety cock. <laughs> that dirty little cock. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. But I think that that's just it. I think that. You know, we all have our shit, but I really do. I'm I'm in awe of Katie this season, and I hate that she was painted as the mean girl. Because even like Sheena, Sheena is a little people pleaser, and I was I was really proud of her with how she stood up to Tom. And I was like, go Sheena, go. But Sheena's, a, I want to be everybody's friend. You know, I, I want to be everybody's change, friend. Though I think Sheena, I think it's I think. Sheena and Ariana's friendship is probably the most real friendship that I think Sheena has. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Sheena's best friends with everyone. She like, she's quoted on that. Like everyone, Sheena's best friend. And, um, oh, hi, Zeke. Hi. How are you doing, man? You want to come be with me for a minute? Oh my goodness. Do you want to say hi? Hi. 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 Can you take your nookie out? I'm going to pause real quick. Okay. Okay. Okay, we're back. We just had to be, you know, be moms for a moment. Okay, a moment. so where were we? We were talking about Ariana and Sheena's friendship. Oh, okay, so I think Ariana and Sheena's, I think Sheena really values Ariana's friendship. So I don't think she's going to go back and, you know, like kind of like take, like, I think she's going to have to stay loyal to Ariana, you know? And I was so proud of her for her conversation with Tom. Like, that's, I, I've seen Sheena, like you've seen Sheena go through divorce. You've she, seen Sheena waver on friendships, be like the people pleaser, try to make everyone her best friend. But I mean, she really, she stood up for Ariana and she was just, I mean, it was honestly like 
I think Sheena redeemed herself in a lot of ways mm-hmm. from that conversation, mm-hmm. you know? She really did. I mean, I'm, I'm a Sheena fan, so I'm not, I'm not trying to like, you know, poo poo on her by any means, but I just see her like the way she wants to rescue people versus like letting them be. And, and there's, there's a quality aspect to that. Like her wanting to bring, Ra- you know, Rachel under her wing and like bring her as part of the group, make sure everyone's taken care of. I also just think that a lot of times it backfires and she doesn't, it's almost like she doesn't know that she's worthy of like really beautiful life-giving relationships, which is a huge part of the sister wound, which I know we wanted to talk about too. So it's like, I just want Sheena to know, like, you don't have to save everybody. Like you are allowed to be happy and like in your, you know. So this is what I have on this. So I wrote this down. I said, trust is something that has to be earned in relationships and friendships. Yeah. Blindly trusting someone is naive. I think, I think Sheena is naive when it comes to friendships and she just like, she has blind loyalty to people. Mm -hmm. And that is a really dangerous thing when it comes to friendships and, you know, choosing your life partner people have to essentially prove themselves to you. And it's not like they have to bend over backwards, but you have to have people in your life that are safe, that you can trust, Mm -hmm. that, you know, are open, are authentic, are real, are vulnerable. And Sheena just like takes these people in under her wing and she has like no standards, I think, for what it means to be her friend. Mm -hmm. So I love Sheena too. I've always loved Sheena. I've I've always felt bad for Sheena when it comes to like the friend group as a whole, especially in the old, old, older seasons. Like she just was kind of the girl that was like casted out and they were mean to her. Like they were yeah, brutal, but Sheena were. always, she, she's always kind of been her. So I've always appreciated that. Like she mm-hmm. is authentic. good as gold. She is good yeah, as she's gold. Good as gold. Now look at her. Like I feel when I look at Sheena, I'm like, I mean, she's lasted like because Stasi, Kristen, and Katie were ruthless to this girl. Mm-hmm. And she's the one that's like still here. She's lasted. She's like, the, did you see the Uber Eats commercial? Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh my I was God. dying. But I think that's just it. I think like Brock has been really good for her. I think that they have a really, you know, from the two seconds that we've seen, feels pretty solid. And I think that that's yeah. also a part of why. She wasn't as involved this season, it feels like, because she's not the little party girl, get into all of the drama. She kind of stays out of it. She's a mom um, and she does her own thing. And kind of same with Lala. Like we don't see a ton of Lala either because she's also being a mom. And I just think it also speaks beautifully to the fact that you can be a mom and have it all. Like they also still have friends and they still have a bit of a social life and they still go out. And yes, it's filming and I'm not naive to any of that, but I think that it just reminds us that we get to keep certain aspects of ourselves as women, also as mothers to young children, and that we also need a support team and we also need a village because they both have their moms who are super hands-on and, you know, potentially like I'm assuming at one point, I think Lala had like a nanny or a sleep nanny and, um, or a milk nurse or night nurse or whatever those are called. And then they have, you know, Lala doesn't have her man anymore, but we've got Sheena and she has Brock. And so also remembering that we have a village and how beautiful that is too. There was one piece I was going to ask about Tom. If there was another part you were going to talk to, I think we should talk about the sister wounding a little bit. And I'm going to try to remember what I was going to say about Tom. So I, so I think the sister wounding was really displayed with Rachel's ability to have these really intimate conversations with Ariana. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that last episode, well, you had the camping trip that was two episodes prior where Ariana was rallying around her, like praising her, really celebrating Raquel and her perceived growth. And even at the something about her party. Ariana was like standing up and was like, Rachel would never, you know, Raquel would never do that. She's my friend. And Tom would never do that. He's my boyfriend. I really trust them. I trust and I love them. Mm -hmm. What really got me was the conversation that they had at Sir with Ariana talking about their relationship, their lack of intimacy within within the relationship, her needs around the quality time. And her sexuality, her body, you know, I Mm -hmm. I wish like Ariana could just see like, Oh my gosh. I think she's short. Like when I see Ariana's body, it's very similar to like my body type. I think 
because it's like, like my body type is like, I'm very thick on the bottom and I can only assume in like Hollywood, like it's just, I don't know. Like I think being in Hollywood and in LA has to be such a mind fuck for women. 100%. And you can kind of see because they're constantly, everyone has Botox, fillers. Well, and men too, even being yeah, a man it's just like, it's like, it has to, like, I think, which is, I have my own thoughts about it. Like I, I've personally never gotten Botox or fillers. I'm not going to say I never will. I just have chosen not to. And, um, I also don't know how safe that is on your body, on your hormones, on like, you're literally putting a foreign substance in your body to prevent aging, which is so natural. I think like we have such a pressure on society for us as women. This is like another thing. I think like we are so terrified as women to age Mm -hmm. and like, there's so much, like I always think about, Rapunzel, like the mother in Rapunzel, the fake mother, the witch mother, she literally steals Rapunzel's hair and uses Rapunzel's hair so that she can stay youthful. And it's like, that is what is pushed on us as women is that we need to stay youthful. We need to, you know, have tight skin. We need to, it's just like your body shifts and changes and your face, you know, you get wrinkles and you have laugh lines and all of these things. So anyway, I'm not going to get on like a spiel about Botox and (laughs) possible toxicity. Powerful though. Yeah. right now on women's bodies, but I'm making a note of that for a future episode. <laughs> okay. Or, Olivia will make me post that. <laughs> she- put it in. I'll put it in ocean. We're good. Yeah. So, so I, you know, I just put cucumber on my face and it works wonders. <laughs> oh my gosh. You and your cucumber. And Oh, by the way, go to YouTube and watch your glowy skincare routine. Cause you also yeah. have that. Yeah. It's good. Okay. Um, 30, going to be 33 in a month. Skin's glowing. Um, and, and it's also my diet. Like it's also like how I take care of myself and the body work that I do. Well, and then, yeah, the nervous system work and the trauma healing, like all of that plays into it as well. Healing my gut, all of it goes together. Again, making a note of this for a future episode. So, um, so anyway, it, it like broke my heart to see Ariana being so open with Raquel and Raquel knowing in the back of her mind that she is, that she is having an affair with her friend's boyfriend. And you can see it. There's a moment, Olivia, where you see her eyes do a thing where it's like, oh, you still want to be in this relationship. So I have to wonder like, what is Tom telling Raquel? But I also am just like, this is your friend. Like, how do you have an into, and here's the deal, doing women's work, Mm. I know the level of intimacy and vulnerability that comes into play when a woman is talking about her body, her sexuality, her desires within relationship, because we have been so conditioned to be disconnected and we feel so much shame for how we look and how we feel. And it's just, it broke my heart. You know, it, it really did. So, you know, what I, what I see in Raquel is I, I, what they have said multiple times is she, she's seeking validation from men, which is the wounded feminine. It's the wounded maiden energy. She's seeking validation for men. She has no identity of self and she, you know, she is, she, she doesn't value female friendships and all of those things combined is a really dangerous woman. It is a woman that simply does not know herself. And well, Ariana straight up said that she (laughs) doesn't know who she is. She's looking for someone to validate her. She's looking for something like she just, I mean, it it started in the beginning of it started in the beginning of the episode even of, or the season of this is Raquel season to find herself. She left James, they broke up and she was going to go on this quest to find who she is without a man. And instead she just found herself swept right back up into that. And I think that that's, what's also so devastating is I feel for her. I don't, again, she's evil. It's awful. All of these things. And there's so much deep yearning and hurt and pain that I think she's moving through. And I think she's realizing now, sadly, and unfortunately in the the sense of like it affecting other people to such a degree, but she is realizing, oh my gosh, like my actions have consequences and she messed everything up and she lost potentially all of her friends. 
Yeah. I mean, really all of her friends besides Tom because, and, and the world hates her and the world wants her. I can imagine her DMs after this, which is also frightening and sad. And the whole, her, you know, potentially checking yourself into rehab for mental health things and whatever. I really hope that that's true in the sense of, I hope she's not using that to make herself look better. And it was a PR stunt. I pray to God that she realizes that her actions have consequences and that she actually takes this as this kind of dark night of the soul of, I need to move through this. Like I need to heal and I need to take responsibility and I need to fix this. Like, this is not okay. Um, Cause that's the other thing is I just feel like her and Tom, I don't know what's up and down right now of, I don't know what's true and what's false because I feel like a lot of it is for PR and to save face. And I really pray to God and I hope that they recognize the severity of what took place. Do you think that she has remorse? Cause I haven't seen remorse yet. No, not see. I mean, did you see the look on her face when they were having those conversations and she was smiling about it? Well, she won the man. It was just like the situation with it's very Lala. like beauty pageant. It, yeah. it was, it was exactly like the situation with mm-hmm. Lala and, um, who is it? The what moms on name? real housewives. Of uh-huh. What was his name? I don't know. Oh, um, uh, Oliver. Okay. So it was just like the situation with Oliver was, which was like, I'm going to get the man. And that makes me the better woman. That makes me, you know, prettier, more likable, like whatever the storylines are around that. And even Lala said it like Lala predicted this. And this is why I love Lala so much is because like Lala and Katie predict it. And I'll even say, what's their one friend, Christina Kelly, like they predicted yeah. this. Yeah. And they could see it. And the reason why they can see it is because those are women that have done the work. Mm-hmm. Those are women that have gone to therapy, have done the healing, have done the work. Mm-hmm. And you can sniff that shit out. You can sniff yeah. it out when you have a girl, a woman in the group mm-hmm. that is just looking for validation of men. Mm-hmm. And it, again, it's dangerous because you will sacrifice every other relationship just to have some guy say, yeah. oh, I like you for the night. Mm-hmm. I like you for the evening. I don't think she, from what I've seen, there's no, and I do, I do pray that she is doing somatic trauma healing. Mm -hmm. I pray that she's getting therapy. Mm -hmm. I pray that she is like doing whatever she needs to do to come back into her body, because that's Mm -hmm. what I've witnessed with Tom and Raquel is, you know, I have a pretty big stance on this is like these labels of being a narcissist, a sociopath, having a lack of idea, identity, all of these things are simply someone who essentially you've left your body. You have no connection. You've dis- detached from your body as a whole. And that's what I think has happened with Raquel for whatever reason is she is not in body. And when you're not in body, you have no remorse. You have no sympathy. She was sitting there with Tom And she's like, she's smiling and she's happy because she's like, oh, I got the guy. And she's probably living this fantasy of like, we're going to run off into the sunset, living happily ever after. And it's like, you got the guy that's in his forties, that's acting like a 25 year old running around at clubs and bars until 2 AM. And he's not going to settle down with you. Like that's not going to happen. You were the mistress. I have only known of one relationship where it works out with the mistress and the man. It doesn't work out. It does not work out because w- there's a psychological thing that happens with sneaking around and cheating. And it's a high. They were on a high. They were hundred percent. He was and, getting off on that so hard. It was obvious. Yeah. And I mean, he had sex with her in her car outside of their house and then knocked on the door and Ariana had to let him in. When I heard that, I mean, I heard it in a reel first and I think I sent it to you like, but it's just like, you're like, you have, you, you're just like, you know, when I do something wrong or I do something bad, I'm always like, okay, how is this going to affect other people? Now being a mother, all of my actions are like, how is this going to affect my daughter? How is this going to affect, you know, the people in my life, the people that love me? And like Tom took no, he didn't think about like you have the companies with people. Oh my gosh, that killed me. Your parents have invested in a Mm -hmm. restaurant. They have put their retirement in a restaurant. 
and you just, you blew it all away, yep. man. And you're yep. still running off being a cover mm-hmm. band mm-hmm. and, you know, thinking that, like, I don't think Tom has remorse. I really don't. Like I've seen no. his stories. I've seen him on social media. I'm just like, man, you have to take accountability. I watched his interview with Howie Mandel and Mm. he put all the blame on Ariana. He put all the blame on the fact that they weren't having sex and their relationship was shit. And, you know, it's just like, then what was it like? It was based on convenience and comfortability and not love and romance. That was so fucked up. So fucked up. I get being in a relationship for a long time because when Justin and I broke up, it was, it had been like a few, it had been, and you know, this it had been like a few years since Elliot, since before Elliot was born, where there was disconnect. And when you're in it for so long, it is hard to leave, but something deep within me was like, and I remember being naked in the shower with him and just like my whole throat closed up, my whole body tightened. And he's, he was just like, say what you're going to say. Just say it. I know it's coming. Just say what you're going to oh, say. Oh, God. I'm just like, I can't be with you anymore. Like, I cannot be here anymore. Mm. And it is the hardest thing to say. Yeah. But you have to say it. Yeah. You have to have that conversation. If you are not having your needs met within a relationship, yeah. and if your partner is unwilling to meet those needs or unwilling to do the work or whatever, then, you know, cause their relationship was probably salvageable. Like, here's the deal. You've, you've lived a life together. What needed to happen was work needed to be done. Mm-hmm. And both of the, both people needed to take radical responsibility for mm-hmm. the roles that they were playing within the relationship. Mm-hmm. It's the hardest thing to do. The hardest yeah. thing to do is to sit someone down and be like, I'm not happy. Yeah. But yeah. what you don't do, I'm going to quote Sheena Shea on this. What you don't do is fuck her best friend. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, they had a lot of things tied there, but he was a coward. He's just like Tom Schwartz. It's like, you guys are cowards. Mm-hmm. You gotta have well, a- I think like asterisk as well, because mm-hmm. I think that the part that where he said, I tried to leave and here's where I think he's thinking, I tried to leave. I tried to leave, but he was like, but you wouldn't let me. Okay. First of all, you're a grown ass man. So take responsibility for that. Second of all, he said she threatened to kill herself. Now, I don't know if that actually happened, but like Sheena or whoever said, well, then you call, oh yeah, Sheena, like you call, like we're rallying around her right now. You call her village. Like I have chills again. You call her village. You ask for help. Um, You don't fuck her best friend. And I think that that's just it is he, I don't, I think even if I can imagine how, because with how cowardly and how awkward and how boyish he is that when he tried to leave, it was like, I don't think we should do this anymore. It wasn't like I'm done and I love you, but I'm ready to move on it. And she's like, well, let's go to, like she said, let's go to couples therapy. Let's do the work. Let's try to figure it out. And so I think that there was that too of, you know, the, okay. So this is weird that she said that she said the thing about couples therapy uh-huh. Tom in the Howie Mandel interview said that they went to couples therapy. Oh, interesting. So he's telling a completely different story. He See, said, it I just well don't believe him. Interview that he kept trying to break up with her and she threatened to kill herself. Nick Vile talked about this and, you know, gosh, get me on the Nick Vile podcast. <laughs> Someone. Someone. Okay, get me in touch it's in, it. it's in notion. <laughs> Cause I like Siri, I just, I would just want to sit down with him and I think we would have a great conversation. I really I don't agree with everything that he says, but I value his perspective. And I think he has a hot take on reality TV and like, he's so into, I just really value his perspective on these things. And he said something of like, when you're, when you're getting broken up with and you feel like your life is shattering, you're going to say things like that. You're Mm going to say, I mean, I remember when Justin and I broke up, like a few days, like the night after I was just like, I just need you to like hug me. Like, I know we're not together, but like, there's an attachment there. Mm -hmm. And I did, Mm -hmm. I felt like, I mean, obviously I didn't hurt myself or do anything like Mm -hmm. that, but I felt like I was going to, like, you feel like you're going to die, you know? So again, you find the people to rally around her, to support her, but you know, it's just, he's such a, he, it's just such a coward move. And Okay. Um, it's such a coward move. And, you know, I'm curious to see 
the reunion. Like, I think the reunions mm-hmm. are going to be gold. I think in the reunion, I think so too. we're going to see a lot more gaslighting from Tom. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to see Raquel trying to justify her actions. Mm-hmm. I would be so curious if she actually apologizes. Oh my gosh. I'm going to end with this. The fact that Tom cried more to Tom than uh. apologize more to Tom than he did to Ariana speaks volumes. He speaks does volumes. not, he does not respect Ariana as a person. He doesn't, he didn't respect the relationship. Nope. Nope. And so I'm curious to see. I also want to know why why James and Tom like are about to get into a fight. I just I want to see the whole thing go down. Like I'm so I think reunion's gonna tell us a lot because I think that you know, as much as this is reality TV and it's edited and it's produced, yes. If you watch the show long enough and you watch enough of like the behind the scenes of it as well, it isn't scripted. And so it is, I mean, they say like that's why it's done so well because this is our real lives and it's this messy. And so I think that it'll be really telling to see what goes down in the reunions. Um, And I just think it's really, like you said, it speaks volumes with how he was with Lisa, with how Tom was with Lisa and how he was with Tom Schwartz that he, I don't think, and that was what I was going to bring it back to with Tom before. And I like made a note of that when I remembered it, it's because I don't think that he actually is sorry. I think that he got off on it. I think he's a pathological liar. I think he has a lot of issues Um, And I think that he's going through this, who am I at 40 and what have I created? And he watched Ariana be more successful than him and all of the different layers to it. And the way he was with Raquel was disgusting in her apartment or whatever that place was that looked like they were in a drug den. I don't know. It was so weird. Who has, who has TikTok lights? Oh my gosh. Well, and then like, he's, I got, like you said, he's like on top of her crouched and he's, you know. It just was such a weird and thing. They said, and I love you, Olivia. They said, I love you. Like, I looked at well, Justin no, she, when I heard no, that. Tom said, um, like, they love you or whatever. And then she said, I love you too. And he said, no, I said, they love you or whatever. But and I then, love you too. But I love you too. But I think that he They was don't know what love is. Like, no. you don't know love. You don't know love until you walk through life with someone. Like, yeah. experience multiple. That's, like, another thing. He couldn't even be there for Ariana's grandmother dying. Mm-hmm. Walk through life mm-hmm. with someone. See your partner mourning. Mm-hmm. See, like, have a, you know, baby with someone. Like, mm-hmm. You don't know love. It's a fantasy. They're living a fantasy Mm -hmm. together. I think that it is so devastating, obviously, what happened on every single layer and every single level that is is here that kind of we barely scratched the surface on today. But I am happy that they broke up because she deserves way fucking better than Tom Sandoval and thriving. I pray that she is getting the therapy that I know that she desires um, because she's mentioned it before so that she can know how valuable she is, know how worthy she is, know how enough she is, and really be able to embody that in her next relationship, in her business and all of her success and all the ways. Um, And I hope that he and Rachel get help because I mean, apparently they broke up, which I think is a PR thing. Apparently rumor has it she's pregnant and hiding in Tucson with her grandparents. So time will tell about that. But I just think that they needed to break up. It was time. It was kind of like when Tom Schwartz and Katie broke up. It was like this. It was, I was happy when they got divorced. I was a little yeah. bit sad, but I was like, good. Thank you. Thank it you. was almost like you either, like you said, this is salvageable. Like you can go to therapy, but if both parties are not willing to take responsibility and do the work, you then need you need to be done. And I think that that was the case with Tom Schwartz and Katie. And that's the case with Ariana and Tom Sandoval. Katie and Ariana are both thriving. I'd love to see the spinoff of them be like so successful and, you know, do Hollywood together and just like live their best lives. Um, and yeah, I just hope that Ariana is like nourishing herself because when Kristen came in and was like, you look so hot and so skinny. And then I'm like, why do we comment on women's bodies like this? Like, and then you just know it's because she hasn't, she's been dry heaving and not being able to eat and like just deep in grief, but yet she's being praised for how she's looking because of that, which is a whole other topic that you definitely need to do an episode on. Um, because I think that that kills me. It's like the same thing on the Kardashians. They always are like, you look so skinny, you bitch. You look so hot. You look so skinny. And I'm just like, oh, look, we're perpetuating that again and again and again, instead of wow. I'm so sorry you're going through this. And like, can I make you some food? <laughs> like you steak, some yeah. soup, mashed you want, potatoes. Yeah, you want some raw milk? I don't know. Like you just, I want you to be nourished 
because yeah. being nourished then regulates your nervous system, then allows you to heal. Because if you're in fight or flight, if you're stuck in survival, you cannot actually grieve and heal. And I just really hope that she's being really supported in all of the ways in her life because she deserves it. She's amazing. She's my I, favorite. I agree. I love yeah. Ariana. She's always been my favorite. And I we want to see her win. I see a lot of myself in Ariana. Like I've always mm-hmm. just found this level of relatability, mm-hmm. like with the body issue things and mm-hmm you know, her needs when it comes to sex in part, like I just, mm-hmm. I, I think I, I just value her. So yeah, I agree. It's relatable. I hope she is nourishing herself and taking care of herself. And I pray that like these women in Hollywood stop getting like this deep validation around how skinny can they be? I was just like, just be well, more. especially cause you know, that that her whole history with her body, I think was even more heartbreaking that that's what Kristen chose to say. And I get it. I mean, I'm so guilty of that. Like Kristen's like the least self-aware person on, I, okay. I have deep feelings about Kristen. I think Kristen's the least self-aware person. I did not like her scene with Ariana. I could have done without it. Yeah. Like the witchiness of it all. Like I thought that was cute, but like I, I could do without Kristen ever Mm -hmm. seeing Kristen on TV Mm -hmm. again, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Same. Yeah. It was an interesting, I mean, it was for ratings for sure to bring her back because everyone got all, but it they, they, they hyped it up to make it be this big thing. And then it wasn't, it wasn't a big it. thing at all. They just had a conversation and did a spell to whatever. I don't even know what the point of it was. So yeah, I think that, you know, it was supposed I, to be like when Brittany, when Jack cheated on Brittany and they did the witches mm, WeHo, you remember that they yeah. did a whole like seance. That's what it was supposed to be like. Oh, okay. It's just not the same. You need Katie mm. and Stassi there. So, yeah, but I think that it's just that. I think that the finale was great TV. It's devastating that it's real life for people. And I think that we have to remember that. And I, I mean, as much as it's easy to go and rip Raquel to shreds and Tom and whatever, I mean, what they did was fucked up and they did mess up. And I don't think that they recognize that. So I think that the remorse is not there, but we don't need to, you know, go destroy anybody's mental health and threaten them. No, no. No. All right. Well, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. I hope that that was cohesive enough with our, I think it was so juicy and good. Was it good? Yeah. Thank you for listening, my loves. Send us a DM or send me a DM and let me know your thoughts. And